quick. Let's talk about Iowa football. Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta is planning for a sold-out Kinnick Stadium when the football season kicks off in September. Their venue holds 69,250 fans. He pointed out, uh, now this is a story from, I believe, yesterday. Uh, there are 100 days remaining until the Hawkeyes' scheduled season kickoff against, uh, uh, let's see, September 5th at home against Northern Iowa. Uh, he acknowledged the outlook could change, but as of today, we are still planning to open Kinnick up and have as many fans join us as want to join us. That's a, a different way of looking at it. And Texas said that they are opening up in June. Like, if there are sports that are that are being played in June, they will, and it's going to be a limited capacity at first. But well, the problem is we don't even know if sports are going to be played in June yet. Yeah, we got no idea. But both, they're, they're opening both it up. The NBA and the NHL haven't given hard dates, but they seem to be looking at July, which is. Weird, but N- NBA so, today came out and said July thirty first is their holy comeback shit. date. Yeah, so they're just, not starting that. They are not starting in October. And no, there's no way. Oh, no, no way. But here's the thing: I think that's good. How many times have we said this for the NBA? Oh, yeah. I know we're getting off of Iowa because I want to stick back to this one. But how many times have we said for the NBA? Just own Christmas to to the summer. Just yeah. own it, and that, it'd be better for everybody. Yes. I mean, so anyway, let's get back to Iowa. All right. So I, I yeah, they're still this. planning to open. This is this is all about. Listen, we're gonna make it available for you to come out, and if you want to come, we'll fill this bad boy up, and we're gonna wave to the sick kids, and we're gonna play games, and we're gonna cheer on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah. And we're going to do this now. If um, uh, what 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 they say about um, oh god, you had the article. Go 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 back through it one more time. Which uh, hold on, which part? The, the whole uh, the venue holds sixty nine thousand two hundred fifty. We're a hundred days away from it. Um, he said, <coughs> "Excuse me." Um, let's see. He said, uh, "We are planning on opening up, and we'll have as many fans join us as want to join us." Uh, one of our scenarios that we haven't closed, um, we are planning for something uh, whether it's seventy five percent, fifty percent, but we haven't let go of a hundred percent at all. The players, the part about the players. You oh, haven't oh, oh, that oh, up. no, that's I haven't, what, I haven't gotten to that part I'm yet. looking back through our notes. That's the part that I love more than anything else. If any kids feel like it's unsafe for them to play and they sit out, they'll retain their scholarships. Yes. They that's can the, come uh, back next year. They can come back whenever they feel safe, yeah. but we're not pulling scholarships. They still have eligibility here, and that is all I want. I I just want to treat these kids. If we're only going to pay them with a scholarship, then that thing needs to be as flexible and as lenient as anything we can make. Well, this is uh, an article from Yahoo Sports. Uh, Nick Bromberg wrote it. The uh, The title was, uh, Iowa AD says athletes unwilling to play because of coronavirus concerns will not lose their scholarships. Uh, his quotes here, he said, we had a conversation about what happens if a student athlete or a staff member doesn't feel comfortable coming back to work, Barta said, and understand there could be an underlying health reason that they're not able to come back and train or work, or it could just be a concern that isn't able to be addressed. Because remember, as long as the virus is here and until a vaccine is created, there will be risk, and we cannot eliminate, no matter what we do, we cannot eliminate risk. We will work to mitigate it, and then people will have to make that choice. If we have a student athlete who chooses not to return, they will still remain in good standing with their team. We will work to mitigate the concerns that they raise, uh, but we would not have a student athlete during this year if they felt that they couldn't compete or train because of the COVID-19 virus. They would not lose their status or their scholarship. That's pretty awesome. That's all I want. That's that's all I'm asking. It right needs there. to be across that's the board. It. it shouldn't be school by school. It should no, be across it shouldn't the board. Be. This is this is why I got upset with the in, in CAA saying schools when it came to the spring athletes, schools can bring them back if they want, or it's up to the school. Then immediately we saw a bunch of schools saying, "Nope, you're a senior. Yeah. Move on with life." Most notable I, was uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Wisconsin, yeah. I love that these kids can say, "You know what? It, I don't. I don't have a pre-existing condition. I don't have any of this stuff. I don't live with a sickly parent. I don't have it, but I just don't feel safe. So I'm gonna sit for a year. I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna stay in shape. But as long as I'm physically able to be on this team and make this team, I want to be a part of it next year or when this thing all." gets way more cleared up, and they shouldn't be punished for that. They I just agree. shouldn't. Yeah, this this should be across the board. Um, you know, you want to make them show up for work? Give them a damn contract and a paycheck. But yes. right now, if all you're paying them is, is this 
bullshit scholarship. And yes, I use that word loosely because I think that's what it is. It's a made up form of currency that doesn't really matter to anybody. Um, then, then that's it. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think I'm with you there. Like I can understand, you know, where Wisconsin's stance was early on. Um, but, I didn't like it. I, but, I don't, but no, I, I neither one of us like it. I know it creates a problem for roster. This one, you just have to adapt rules. All right, we're going to make yeah. roster sizes bigger. We're we're not well, going it, to not even necessarily that. Remember, like, some some of them were smaller schools, and they they were uh, they couldn't afford no, extra scholarships, bullshit. which is that's what they just stated. Bull, not being able to afford the scholarship. It's a made up number. Yeah, it's a made up number. Well, it, part of the scholarship for athletes is. All of the nutrition that goes into it, all of the different things that you provide. Not for the track guy. Athlete. The track guy eats at the same cafeteria as a science kid. No, you're right. You're right. That's just not. That's just not true. It, it's just it's, not. It's still you know free meals. That is and a stuff bullshit like argument. The true cost of of having a kid on campus and taking classes is almost nothing. Yeah. Uh. Jump in real quick. Damian Estrada said, I don't think it's a good idea to have fans in the stadium yet uh, unless there's a way to keep people at a distance from each other and keep everyone safe. Uh, I, I mean, look, I'm kind of, I might be in the same boat as you. I, now, being outside helps a little bit. Um, it's not as easily transferable when you're outside, especially in the heat. So something like that might help things out. Uh, having a full stadium might be a little crazy. Uh, Huey said, where does that stat come from on the cost? Uh, which the one that Chris was talking about, or I don't think I actually talked about a cost. Um, yeah, we don't, we was, don't, I don't have hard numbers. I just know that the the only thing that would actually really cost anything is we could have a room, a person sitting in a dorm room and charging them room and board. But when they eat the cafeteria, the amount of food that one person consumes when you're feeding that many people would get Negligible. thrown away every day. The amount of him, one person sitting in a classroom when you have classrooms of 50 and 60 and a hundred people is, is, is just, they're just not taking up a chair because every class isn't full. Yeah. So the actual true cost when you're on campus, even at a small school, like the first school I went to Washita, that 2000 people were on campus total. I was one of 2000 people. Yeah. If they didn't get my check, it wouldn't, but I showed up for all the classes Outside of being able to rent my dorm room out, it's the only thing that really costs money. Uh, back to Damien's thing. How do you feel about having full stadiums? I'm not. A, I, it's just a people's choice, okay? Yeah. And if we start seeing massive spikes, which we will know far before football stadiums are full, if we're going to see massive spikes because of large crowds of people or not, because we've been having large crowds of people for the past, I don't know, two, three weeks in some of these areas. And if we're not seeing massive spikes and we're not seeing hospitals get overrun and we're not seeing more people dying and everything is fine, then, then I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm going to think it's those people's choice if they want to do it or not. Yeah. And if you got 80,000 people that want to show up and they're willing to pay a ticket and they're willing to buy, by purchasing the ticket, sign away their rights to, I can't sue the school if I get the Rona from showing up on campus, then, you know, I'm fine. I'm not against it. Yeah, I can understand. I uh, I went ahead and got a refund on my my Foo Fighters ticket. Oh, I, I wish you just saw. I'd have just bought that. Well, ticket. it's a it's 124 bucks, and basically, I can go buy another ticket once it gets closer if I feel more comfortable with being inside an arena where there's circulated air and. All that that's kind of fine. Mess. That's so okay. So that's that's what I'm looking at it as because it I had to. I had I'm to get not the refund dissing today. your decision. Yeah. Other than the fact that I wish I could have bought it. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, I would have sold it to you. I mean, <laughs> you never I don't, brought don't, it up. In Foo Fighter, really. Now we're off the subject. In Foo Fighter, really particular about when they play. No, like scalping tickets. Uh. Yes, kind of. I went to a Garth Brooks concert not too long ago, and you literally had to show photo ID with the ticket. And that's so. Foo Fighters is not quite to that level, which um, I will tell you. But Garth, I appreciate, yeah. by the way, I do appreciate because that way the real fans are buying it. Are yeah. like the lowest form of people on the planet. Yeah, Foo Fighters are not to that point, um, but it is what it is. Um, okay. Huey said, "How many people are going to be willing to get out and put themselves at risk?" See, that's the that's. The I'm going to bet more than you think. 
I, I would bet more than you. Think of the entire alumni base for any major Power Five school. You only need fifty thousand of those people. Yeah, I, I think I think you'll be fine. I uh, mean, think of the amount of alumni base and fans that any of these schools have. They all have millions of fans. Every one of them. Uh, Michael said, uh, "Full stadiums would be fine. Let people calculate their own risk." Yeah, that's. I think that's the deal. And so, well, just, I would tell you, if we get to a point where we see by the middle of August, no, we've opened things up and people are we're overflowing hospitals and things like that, then you have to pull back the reins and we have to adjust. What like like all of these statements we're making are based off of the last two weeks we haven't seen anything insane happen. Hospitals aren't being overflown. And 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 they're actually medical personnel are being furloughed because there aren't enough people going to the hospital for stuff. Yeah. Uh so it's just it's just one of those things. And I'm also not the expert and I don't pay close enough attention to know any of these real numbers. But I think if things were getting crazy again, we'd know about it. Yeah, no, they absolutely. As, as a matter of fact, the numbers are showing that, I mean, everything's pretty much declining. That's uh, that's it. Crazy. And we're like, opening up, and they're declining. So yeah. that's a good thing, not a bad thing. I think by by the end of August, beginning of September, I mean, let it rip. Yeah, we've still got go. we got a hundred go. days before football season starts. If North if Northwestern has a home game and they allow fans, and I can get up to Chicago, I'm gonna be there. Yeah, uh, Michael said, I don't judge anyone's decision to each his own. Uh, I just like the option to go or not. The government cannot continue to make decisions for us. I mean, that's uh, you know, it's a it's a political stance for sure. But yeah, I mean, in a situation like this, when the numbers are going down, like one, it is the government's responsibility to protect people from themselves if something like this is going on, right? Like it, the shutdown initially was needed warranted. To Hundred percent needed to happen. But now that you have seen, now that things are opening back up and whatnot, you still see declines in numbers, um, in in positivity rate. Like that's a major deal. You know, that's it. So we're we're not. It it may it's still very serious. Um, here we not go. My wife. Not. He said my wife is a nurse practitioner. She's seeing layoffs at her job. Yeah, I mean my mother in law uh, works at a hospital, and I mean they they furloughed people and they. Every medical person I know is not getting furloughed, but their hours are getting cut back substantially. Exactly. All of their benefits, their PTO is gone. Their, um, their uh, uh, what you call it, 401K not being matched anymore. The hospitals are hemorrhaging money because we don't have people going in for regular treatments that they would normally be having. Yeah, and, and the big situation for that, a lot of those places uh, in Alabama, they cut out all non-emergency, like yes. non-COVID-related stuff yeah and by doing that I, there wasn't enough to come in on, that's that's not just like oh you're getting a boob job that's not important that's no. you tore your rotator cuff and we need to have surgery our our granny needs a hip replacement and she's living in pain granny's just going to, have to live in pain another couple of months like these yeah. are things these are operations that need to happen but that they, are not happy. This is not just happen. all cosmetic. Now they are know. starting to to open back up and things like yeah, that in in different segments of the country. Starting but, to, they're starting and, and that's to. That's the thing, which it's, is fine. But we need to get those people back to work because those are the ones yeah. that carried our damn country through the pandemic. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. All right, let's uh, let's jump off of that. Let's 